Hey, what is up, guys? Blendercode here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a first-person shooter. Um, yeah, okay, so I made a another playlist about how to do this. It was kind of awkward. I mean, there was a lot of mistakes in it. The video wasn't too good in the beginning, so today I'm going to be doing it, well, this time I'm going to be doing it better, and I'm using this mic. Um, it's, it's a lot better than the, uh, other one I was using and sorry about that the last video I made about um I think it was either the one I, I made just about how to make player movement with Python or the one I made without Python the video was kinda really sucked um not the video but the audio because I was trying something I tried to see what it was like if uh let's see I hope I don't have an enabled this time yeah no that made it so that when I was talking if I wasn't talking it would just cut all sound out and it just sounded really bad so let's not do that but anyways here we go so if you're new to blender and you just want to check this out this is a basic setup this is a this is in the default mode and in the render mode um, we're gonna be changing that here in a second but you'll see that we have this right here this is our properties tab um, it looks like this uh, yeah what it does is it like pretty much controls the properties of the object that we have selected this is the animation time bar I mean we uh, aren't gonna need that as much in the game and this if you press T you can make it go away but this is the tab um, not the tab but the, uh, the kinda like the tools place you know it has like what we need to transform to you know translate rotate scale um, to add stuff but it's a lot easier if we do it a different way and well that, that's kind of it I mean there's more to go over which we will go over in the later episodes but let's just get started so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna want to um, go from blender render to blender game because we're making a game and if you don't have these right here that's okay because uh, I went into my property uh, into my um, preferences where is it right here control out you and I just said literally enabled every single thing on blender but you don't have to um, that's if I press space right this will pop up for you guys if you press space um, just a search bar will pop up but that's okay so let's go to blender game right so now if we press P it'll it'll play the game and go from default to game logic you can if you don't like how small the space is, you can bring this down like that. Okay, and right here you'll see how it's top down. There's all these little squares, and if you move it, it'll look really weird. That's okay. Just press five on your number pad, not on the top numbers, just on your number pad to um, get rid of that. Oh, yeah. See, if you press like one, two, two, three, you'll see down here it's changing those are um, layers so yeah we're gonna be doing layer one for right now okay so we're going to go into player movement um, there's two ways you can do this I mean I have you could do it inside this editor right here or you can um, get what I have uh, so you can make it like reusable so you don't have to keep writing it down every time you want to make a game okay so first of all let's just bring our player up right and this is gonna be our player so we're gonna go into this properties tab right here go to this orange square and rename it from cube to player so um, I'm just gonna have a lowercase p so it's gonna be faster to write and then you, if we put our mouse right here and scroll down to this physics tab, it looks like a ping pong ball bouncing. Go from static to character because it's going to be a character in our game and actor. Okay. So give it a collision bounds box. Um, if you don't do this and you want, if you don't do this, then when you uh, ch if you change the size of your character, he'll like fall halfway through the floor or something. So just add the collision box and then we're good to go. Okay, so now press Shift C to go directly into the middle, and spacebar, add plane. Okay, press S to scale, 
and let's just go like 20 so there we go let's give this a color so go into our material so with your ground that you just made selected go into your materials tab new okay and you'll see that it changed color let's just make this um like blue maybe not that blue like this blue and let's make our player um dark blue there you go okay so it, when we have all this set up we're going to need to make it so our player can move now there's a I did make a video on this on how to do this um without what I'm about to do but um if you do it that way it'll take maybe uh I don't know like half hour 40 minutes I don't know at least to um do it it's really hard just to do it with all these logic blocks right so um first of all if you're about to exit out of the video because we're going to be using coding just let me tell you something you people that are um looking for ways to j only use make a game using the logic blocks well it's not going to happen it's it's just not i mean there's too many things that you need with the editing uh with the python in order to do it plus actually um to contradict your belief python is easier than these logic blocks because it takes forever uh to make all the right kind of movements with our player because let me demonstrate okay so this green arrow right here is going to be our face so let's select our character and go into edit mode and just well with our character selected go to global and go to local yeah okay so you'll see that the arrow is still pointing that way that's okay so let's go back to global and let's just uh sorry in edit mode with your cube selected press control r go up twice so not twice but like uh, on your scrolling thing you could uh, just go up once or you can just press two okay and click twice okay two uh now do it sideways and then click okay so when you click the first time it's just so we can move it when you click the second time it's to set it so if you're moving it somewhere and you want it to be in the direct middle and you accidentally moved it just right click and it'll put it in the direct middle okay so let's just take this face right here oh and turn off this thing um I don't know if you guys have it turned on but I do and I don't like it so let's just move this up a little bit and press E to like pull out another face it's E for extrude there we go so that's gonna be our front face for right now or not um, we need something to signify that it's our front face we could like pull this up a little bit E to extrude up S Y to scale it down okay and then E shoot up again and then select this one E and then out or because I really don't like that we could just remember <laughs> wherever the camera is so let's just get that set up okay um, sorry to waste your time with that but in edit object mode um, select your camera because we're gonna need to be able to see so well actually select your person first control s okay cursor to selected so that's gonna bring this little um, thing that kinda looks like uh, it, this is what it's called it's called a, a cursor okay it's gonna bring it to our uh, 3d origin which is in the middle of our cube and the cursor is the thing that looks like a red and white circle with uh, black stuff coming out with black lines coming out of it okay then click on your camera and shift s and then selection to cursor okay so you see that our camera has a weird angle um that's good uh, not good but um we can fix that so with our camera selected press control r and that pretty much it moved it it made it so it cleared the rotation did i say control r i meant alt r alt r press alt r sorry about that guys um and it'll clear the rotation so when the camera isn't um 
when it's not rotated in any way, apparently it's just facing down because it's a dud. So that's good. Or bad, or however you want to look at it. So w without doing the next part, select your character. And then let's scale them up to the size we want them to be. So let's press S. And then press Control, uh, not Control, but Shift Z. Because um, when you press S, right, you're scaling things. And if you just press S, you're going to scale the whole object, right? But if you press S and then Shift, Shift press on um, one of the axes, which is the Z, which is going up, the Y, which is going out, and the X, which is going left and right. Okay, so Y is our front and back, and left X is our left and right, right, right and left, and then Z is our up and down. So um, with that, let's press S, and we want to ignore the Z because we don't want them to grow taller or shrink smaller. But I'll also press Shift Z to ignore it, and then just bring it in like that. So that's a fair enough um, thing. Let's just bring our camera up a little bit. Do you see our camera in relation in relation with our character? That might be a little too small of a character, so we can press. S and then shift Z again, bring them out a little bit, and then S and then press only Z. Don't shift, press Z. Just press Z. Bring them up a little bit and. Okay. We just want to, we want the camera to kind of be proportional. Like, we don't want our person to be too small in a game, right? Unless we're making a small game. Okay, so if you have any questions about this, you can ask in the comment section below, but we're not done. We're not done, but um, if you're getting confused, you can ask. I'll answer. So let's just press, with our camera right here, uh, let's put it in front of where our like character's head would be, okay? And then press R, X, and then on your number pad, uh, type in 90. Because that moves it up on the x-axis, positive 90 degrees. Which, um, if you guys know math, it's just like right up like a, that. You know, moves it straight forward. Then let's bring it in to our player. And if you guys don't know how I'm moving, um, use the wheel to scroll in and out. And press, press and hold the wheel to move around. And shift and press the wheel just to move left and right or up and down so there we go that's how you do that so um... let's just bring it in i'd say that's about that's about good um, okay let's not do that but bring it down a little bit because that's like where our eyes are or that's just where our head's gonna be like right there so now with your camera selected if you press shift and right you right click to select objects so with your camera selected press shift and right click on your character okay so now they're both selected and make sure you had your camera selected first or you're or you're not gonna be doing it right and then press control P and um, these ones ignore them and just set parrot to object okay um so now that we have that you'll see that if we only select our player and we move him around that he'll uh that the camera will follow him so now you'll see that if we press p if we press p uh well nothing's happening but um yeah, we have this basic setup. Our character kind of looks really fidgety, though. Is he moving? That's really weird. <laughs> um, anyways. I didn't put him under the ground, did I? No. Um, okay, so now let's make our player move. So in order to do that, um, you can either go to Templates, Python, Game Logic Simple, and then delete this right here okay because we don't we don't have this because in order to have this code right here we need to make a sensor called my sensor and an actuator called my actuator and uh, we don't have we don't have those because we don't need them so let's just delete this sorry if you can hear the train in the background um, 
That is really loud. Just wait. Is it almost done? Well, I really hope you guys can hear me. But um, So you can write it in here. Or if you want to make it reusable so you don't have to write it again, but you can just pull it out of a file and then place it in. We c you can um, download this. You can either download PyCharm or this thing called Python, which is... What is it? Okay, it doesn't want to tell me the information. Anyways, so, um, once I'll show you how to download Python. So, go to this right here, um, to your internet browser, obviously. You don't have to have Chrome, but, okay, and when it opens, nice timing, um, <laughs> go to Python. Python. dot org. Make sure you spell Python right. Okay. Ain't that slow? Uh, there we go. And you'll see it's it's a US foundation so you're safe anyways but this is uh, like the actual python place where you get the um idle but um go to downloads you know and get get this one right here the 3.4.3 just because it's it's the newest one but um after you have that if you're using windows 7 you know you're good just press like if you're using windows 8 press the windows and press C at the same time like the windows on your keyboard and C at the same time if you're using Windows 7 just press the start button down there okay go to search and then once you have it all the way downloaded and everything go pr type in search for idle okay and don't search for the Python or anything search for idle Python because this is how you edit it Python's what we downloaded you know they're completely different. So once you have, once you find this idle, just right click on it, and yours will say pin to start. So pin it to your start, or not to your start, but pin it to your taskbar, and then you'll be good. You know, if you want to pin it to your start for Windows 8, you're crazy, but for Windows 7, it's still okay. Um, but yeah, so pin it to start, and it'll look like this, and it'll say idle. So you only want the one that says idle. So type in idle, and now let's open it. So close down your browser open blender back up and wait for python to open or not there we go okay so let's actually let's just bring this down for a second if you're using blender um you can copy exactly what i'm writing okay in here just make sure you um name it the same thing okay so we're gonna be naming this player movement but I'm not gonna be using this so um let's just copy this right here because I'm gonna explain it in a second so control C and then let unlink this um, if you're using blender to write the code uh, don't unlink it just name it player movement because that's what we're gonna be naming our script so once you have this Python 3.4.3 .3 shell open go to file new file move this one over to the right and move this one over to the left okay file and then so once you have this thing that says entitled this is the idle editor this is um the like the console so if we type in print you know if you don't know what this means it's okay print blah it'll do it but if we do it in here and tell it to run it it'll do the same thing so don't write it in here though because you can't really write a script like this in there because you can't save it. Um pretty sure. Okay, whatever. This it doesn't matter. But um it's just not gonna work the same. So go to file with on your idle one, the one that says entitled, and save it. And um I made a folder on my desktop called Python files. Okay, so um, this stuff, 
uh, inside your Python files folder, go to um, file name, and let's just we're gonna name this player. Uh, actually, name it, people who are using the Blender Python editor. Um, just hang tight, or you can skip to where I start writing. But name it player action, not player movement. Dot py. Okay, so I'm gonna start writing now. So after we save it. Now we can start writing. There we go. Okay, so let's just pr press Control V to copy that down, and now I'm going to explain it to you. And yes, you do need to understand this, or you're just going to be kind of a bad game maker. So let's just start with this import BGE. Okay, so I'm just going to move it up like that. What this means is, uh, it's it's going to be taking things from BGE. So you might be wondering what BGE is. Well, if you're working with Blender, it stands for Blender Game Engine. Okay, so BGE. Uh, th these are not capitalized. They are lowercase. And make sure they are lowercase because all codes are cap sensitive. Okay. So when it says import BGE, that means it's going to take... It means that we can use anything from the Blender Game Engine's code. So anything that any function... Um, or variable that the Blender game engine has, we can use. Okay, since we're importing it. Well, any of them that isn't private, anyways. Um, so I don't even know. Is there a is there a private in Python? I'll need to look that up. But anyways, when it says import BGE, pretty it's pretty much just saying that we can use things, we can use variables that the programmers wrote inside the Blender game engine, so functions or something. So now let's go into the function. This is our main function. Now when I first started I saw I didn't see this like this, I saw it like that. So I saw the function and then I saw this thing that, that I thought was the closing. Well this isn't a closing. Um, we could have another function right here or we can have it just writing like there or we can have a comment you know which is a hash or a pound or a number sign or whatever you want to call it um, but this is not the ending thing so right now I'm just gonna erase that and then we're gonna come back to it do do not try to run your script without that though so I'll tell you why in a second so this is our function right when you're writing a function you type in def and that stands for define so right now we're defining a function and we are calling it main so it is the main function and it takes no parameters meaning we don't have to write in anything for the function to work so we don't have to write anything in these parentheses for the function to work okay I'm gonna see if I can like zoom in Let's see it uh do, 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 do. um can i edit edit this let's see i i don't know but if i if i can i'll do it later um but anyway so we're so we're pretty much just making a function here and whenever you make something in python right that you're going to have to write inside of it so think of this as like the object so think of this as like a box this right here dang it come on this right here is our function whatever whatever this is our function this line right here is our function and anything below this anything below this that is on this indent scale and what I mean by indent scale is this you cannot write code right here for function it will not work and you'll get errors or you'll yeah you'll get errors because it won't know what variables you were talking about okay so make sure that you write it on the same indent scale so you'll know what I mean that you'll know what I mean if you go to this colon right here so this is how you say um, this is how you say we're making a box with this colon Okay, so you make your function, and then you make this colon for your box, and then you press enter. Press enter right in front of your colon, and it'll bring you right here. It won't bring you over here, and that's good, because if you try to write right there, it will not work at all. I really hope you guys understand that, because look, right here, these aren't back here, okay? You, you'll get errors, and just bad things will happen. So make sure that you just go to your colon, sign, and press enter. So we called it main, right? Um, you can call it something else, but pretty much everybody uses the main.
because it makes sense and it's normal and it's saying that this is the main thing that's going to happen okay so just like unless you want to be weird and not follow along i mean you can use a different name but okay so anyways this is the code inside the box so this is what's inside the box this says cont cont is just the name of variable so variable so if you're used to other um other let's say uh coding languages then you'll know that um you have to write what kind of it what kind it is or if you're like using javascript or something you just write var for variable well in python um you don't have to write down say like it's a number variable or it's a word variable you just write the name of the variable and um a lot of people might not like that about python i mean it's probably not one of the best things about python but python's a pretty simple language so i guess that might be why and that might also be a reason why python's not as powerful as some of the other languages i mean it is powerful right it uh, made some pretty cool things that you guys use today so let's not diss it too much but um anyways so this is just the name of a variable cont and uh it's pretty much short for controller you know and what they're doing is they're naming it cont so c o n t not c u n t and they're setting it equal to um with one equal sign to the blender game engine right that's where what we imported up here so we're taking things out of the blender game engine we're taking it out of the Blender game engines, uh, like game logic. If you know what a game logic is, you're in, you're good. If you don't, just it's pretty much we have log we have uh, physics in the real world, right? Like falling objects. That's it's it's just logical to know that if you drop it, if you let go of an object, it's gonna fall when you're on Earth, unless it's like I don't know a bubble, but it's not a bubble it's a game so it's the game the game's own physics so the game logic so blender game engine dot logic and this dot means that we're going inside of it so like if we go into this folder um not that folder but um this is my videos right so go into our videos and then like let's say we want part three so we'd say we'd say computer so or like or like favorites dot desktop um where is it of course i i would lose my own folder dot att vids dot part three um nope you guys don't need to watch that okay so that's what this is so it's gonna be bge and then into another place dot logic and then inside logic, we're gonna, this is a function because it has a parameter, but it does, you don't need to write anything inside of it. So it's going to say dot get current controller. And what that does is, let's go into our game engine real quick to Blender. Right here where it says add controller, right? Now, I, s I made a real big mistake in some of my other videos saying that they are not the same thing. They are the exact same thing. I'm really sorry, but the, when it says dot get current controller well you'll see right here that if we go to controllers there's a python controller what this does is if we add an always sensor so always and then select these three dots and what those three dots means is frequency so it sets a frequency to it of zero which means it goes really fast see no delay right if you set one it'll be a delay of one and connect those it's gonna be always running this script right this is the python controller this is where we tell it to run the script so where it says get current controller it's saying get the controller from where this script is running okay and you really i messed up in my other video saying that they're not the same thing they are they are the exact same thing I said that it's this right here you know this is why I'm remaking this series because the other one was bad I advise you not to watch it um, I'm gonna make this one a lot better I promise okay so it's gonna get this controller and anything connected to it so like if we want an actuators we're gonna say cont so this controller dot actuator so I, again we're going into the folder and seeing what's connected to it so we're gonna say the actuator okay 
So if you, you don't understand that, um, please like watch this video. You know, watch that part again. You'll you'll get it the more we do this. But all you need to know for now is that you have a variable named cont. And we're going to be setting it equal to the bge dot logic dot get current controller. So the controller from where the Python's running, and then own. So that's just the name of another variable is going to be equal to cont. So that's what we needed up here. If we name this fish, we would say fish dot owner. Okay. But this this right here where it says owner. Is in it's in the Blender game engine. Um, it's in the Blender game engine's own code, so we can't change owner. Okay, so own is equal to cont dot owner. So what that means is, let's look into our person. Okay, so we have our our player selected right here. It says player. So the owner of this controller. So pretty much our player owns this controller because it's inside of him. <laughs> if that makes sense, you know. Um. So it's the it's the owner of the controller, and right now our player owns the controller. So let's just go back into our player action, and we're good now. So cont dot owner. Okay. So let's go back into that main thing, and so what you saw before was it was main. So right here the the script would run. The script would run perfect. Um. It won't run how you want it to if you don't add in that main, but this is good. You know, it doesn't need it doesn't need to be closed because main that that's not a closing tag. That is like um let's say let's erase this, okay? So we have the, we have like some phone numbers, right? We have one phone number, two phone number, three phone numbers. So this is our first phone number and the name of the person is main, right? So we have we have our phone and we want it to call main so we go into our phone right and then you type in your person's name or you can type in the phone number so this is like the phone number so you type in the phone number and right now the phone number is M A I N and then these two parameters um tell it to call it so pretty much this is calling the function and telling it to do its work so this isn't closing the function which is what I thought for a long time and I was confused by it, but this just pretty much means that saying, hey, main, come come work, you know, do what you need to do. If we don't have this, it'll still run. It's just not going to, um, just not going to do anything. If you have other scripts tied into it, then, then you might get some errors. But, um, yeah, this is just telling the function to work, you know, telling it to start. Yeah, that that's good. So this is just saying main start. And um what goes into here, right? If you watch my um series when I explain how to use Python in Blender, um you'll understand what a parameter is, you know. I'll explain it to you real quick. Uh, pretty much what it is is like if we write something in here, like if we write x right there, and then uh then we'll have to like We'll get an error because we'll have to this this means that it needs something so if if we make a variable called x that means we're gonna have to put something in here so like one or like the la 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 you know it, it pretty much just means that it needs a variable for it to work because it needs to tie something into it so it means like um well i i like when i when i have something like a story you know so it makes more sense so let's say you, you're making a burrito right and you the name of your function is cheese burrito so you're calling the cheese burrito and for the cheese for the cheese you know burrito you're gonna need a certain type of cheese and a certain type of meat so like you'll make a variable called cheese and let's just uh let's just set it equal to or don't do that don't do that you write it in here okay so you need a certain kind of cheese and then comma space and then you just kind of meet so you know if you want to like uh i almost said jack daniel's cheese i mean um uh you know that that cheese that has the word jack in it kobe jack so you need kobe jack cheese and like uh bacon okay so 
that's pretty much what it is. You type in type in a variable for it. So Kobe Jack. I'm pretty gonna, sure I'm going to be spelling it wrong. Kobe Jack and bacon. So that's what it means. You can do it with numbers. Um, I didn't I didn't do that right. Those should have been um with quotes. But the main doesn't need any parameters. Okay, so don't put parameters inside the main function. So we're good. That's pretty much what you need to know for it. Uh, how long have I been doing this? Jeez, half an hour. We good, we good. Um, so let's start writing. So with this file saved, okay, let's go into here. Um, we can open it or we can wait to the end. If you guys are following along on the Blender, you don't need to open it. But um, let's just wait. So... The first thing we're going to need to do, you know, we're going to need to make player movement. So we're going to want our player to move. So let's just say uh, keyboard. Okay, so we're going to be, because we're going to need the keyboard in order to move the player. Okay, so keyboard, this is the name of our variable. Okay, you can name it fish, but just for sane people's sake, let's go to keyboard is going to be equal to BGE dot logic, so the game's logic that keyboard okay so you don't need uh, you don't need parameters for that because this isn't a function this is a variable so it's just the keyboard you're using so um, that's about it so once we have that defined let's say let's make an if statement so what it's saying is if you're doing something then do this so let's say if if uh, bg dot logic dot kx I don't understand what the kx stands for um, you can look that up uh, so kx underscore sensor okay make sure this is all capitalized just the kx underscore sensor and then underscore active so um, we're pretty much saying that we're going to the bg's logic I explained that and then we're taking the kx, the kx underscore sensor, and then when it's active, so underscore active, so it's going to be sensing. Maybe the keyboard stands for, you know, the k stands for keyboard, and the x is just like a variable. So it's going to take like the keyboard sensor and seeing which one's active, and then whenever you're making an if statement and you're seeing if something is equal to something, you use two equal signs, not one. So when you're assigning a variable, um when you're assigning it a like a number or a word you use one equal sign so that's assignment but if you're saying if something is equal to something you use two if that makes sense you're good okay so two equal signs for the if statement if it's equal to um one second sorry guys so um we're still gonna say if the if the sensor that is active is equal to the keyboards the keyboard dot events so again we're going into the keyboard and we're looking at its events make sure you spell keyboard right so keyboard dot events and now we're not we're not going to add parameters right because this isn't a function um we're not we're not putting something into it we are like we're pulling something out so we're gonna add these square brackets and um, that doesn't stand for pulling something out this stands for a list so like um, if we made one called alphabet so we'd have a list of all the letters right and then like so we'd say like BGE dot logic dot alphabet and then you put in these square brackets and then you'd say like a or B you know because that's the name of the variables Okay, so keyboard.events, and then one of the variables is bge.events. Okay, now this is a function, so you add these, or not not a function, sorry. Uh, so we're looking to the, <laughs> sorry, the Blender game engine.events, and then we're going again into the folder, and we're going to say dot uh, w key. Make sure w key is in all capitals. So that's how you do that. And again, this is like a box, so we're putting something in the box. So we add this colon, and then you press enter. Okay, so now we're on a new indent scale. So if this is happening, then we're going to say own, and again, own is the controller's owner, so the Python's owner, 
and then we're going to say dot apply movement. So we're applying a movement to the owner of the um, <laughs> to the owner of the Python controller. And then we're going to add these because this is a function. Now this one is going to take parameters. So inside that we're going to add another two, and then we're going to say comma true. I'll explain that in a second. But inside these parentheses, we're going to say zero, okay, comma, no, we're not going to say zero. We're going to say point, uh, yeah, we're going to say zero, comma, point one five, comma, zero. Now I'll explain this, okay? So we're applying movement, right? And then we're adding this. So this is one parameter by itself. It's just in parentheses. So we're going to say we're not going anywhere on the x-axis. So it goes x y z so this is how we apply movement so we're not going anywhere on the y-axis but we are going since we're moving forward let's go back into here see how um, the green arrow the green arrow is our y and the green arrow is also our face and whichever way the arrow is facing that's the positive number so we're gonna so when we press W we're gonna want it to go this way like 0 0.15 0 0.15 if you go any faster than that, you'll go through walls and stuff. I don't know. I I used to I used to use two, and then I went to the wall, so I went down to 0.15. You know, 0.2 to 0.15. You might be able to do 0.175, but anyways, this is our front face. So where the positive y-axis is our front face, and that is why in our Python script we put it on the y. We're going 0.15 on the y, so it goes x, y, z. And make sure you put those in parentheses because that is one variable or one parameter. And then put a comma after that and put true with a capital T. Python uses a capital T. Other languages use like a lowercase t. But um, capital T and true. Okay, so what this means is inside of our um, Blender instead of blender our character right remember how I went in and I put and I put it on local well let's just put it on global right if we press R X and move our character like that see how the green arrow is still going to the left you know it's still on the exact same place well if we go from global to local or what the heck global to local you'll see that the arrow is now facing that way because this is our own players y-axis so we always want it to move on its local y-axis because if like let's just I'm just gonna press control Z okay so like if we turn it let's go into the global if we turn it R Z and we turn them around 180 degrees okay if we turn them around and we try to go forward on the Y you know if we try to go forward globally we're not going to go this way we're still gonna go we're gonna go backwards when we go ahead and go forwards so what true means is it means we're enabling the local variables so now it's facing that way okay so RZ 180 so let's go back into global and that's what the true means okay so let's just go file save and um, We'll make the we'll make the uh, back left and right in a second, but go to text. If you're doing it in the Blender game engine, don't do this. Go to text, open text block, uh, open text block, desktop, and then where we put it, we put it in. I really should have put it in Blender scripts, not Python files. But you just go to wherever you put it, and then click on it, open text block. And now we have this. So we can, uh, for you people who might not be able to see it, I'm just going to scroll up a little bit. And so now we have exactly what we wrote in here. So that's good. So you'll see that if we plug, that it also has the same name as our file. So if we plug it in right here, um, people who are using the Blender, uh, please name it the same thing. So if we plug it in right here, move this back. Okay. And let's let's just uh, let's not go into our camera yet. Go like this. Press P. Okay. So you'll see that now we go forward. We can't go back or left because we still need to put that in. Okay. So now let's go back into our file. Copy this. Let's just copy it. Like that. 
copy it and paste it there we go so now we have four you know for forwards back left right so let's just change this from w to capital s key from w to uh... capital a key and from w to capital d key so forward back left right okay so since we're going back that's going to be on our negative y so we're just going to put a negative sign right here because we're going to go backwards on the y-axis okay and then this one we're not going anywhere on the y-axis because i'll show you why so this is the a key right so a is left so let's go into our blender into blender and if we're looking forward you'll see that x which is our first number is facing right so when we are doing the d key which is going right with our player we're gonna say we're gonna make use a positive number but this is negative this is our negative x-axis right here so we're gonna um, say a negative number for a so let's go in back into our player action and again x is our first number so we're gonna say since this is a we're gonna say negative 0.15 on the on, on the x yes they're the same number but make sure it's on the x because we only want to move on the x unless um, you are now I say sometimes I say you're weird but you have to be extremely weird to go forward with your A key okay zero and then since this is the D key which is uh, right on the Y axis which is positive we're gonna say positive 0.15 okay so now that we're all done with that press control S or save save up here okay now go into your Blender, Blender Game Engine. Um, right here, we we have to go into. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to show you guys that. You guys might not have the numbers or the highlighted letters. Um, for that, you need to go into. Um, uh, see. I don't know, but you might have some buttons right here. Uh, enable enable the show numbers lines to text and enable the syntax highlight for scripting so now we're gonna have to go and let's see I wonder why it's not telling me to refresh it usually it does could not reload file what the why not Okay. Do we need to exit out of it? Well, let's not exit out of it yet because there's one more thing we need to do. So we want our player to jump. So right here in actuators, let's add a jump or not a jump, but a motion. Okay. And don't make it a simple motion. Make it a character motion. So you'll see we we now have an option to press jump. So press the jump button and connect it to your Python script. So now let's go into back into our Python script, and we're going we're going to uh, oh what did I just do? Why did I do that? So we're going to say jump because that's the name of our variable. Jump is going to be equal to cont so our controller whatever is connected to our controller cont dot actuators. So we're going to be looking at all the actuators that is connected to our Python controller which is this right here so this is the actuator let's name this jump because that's a jump uh... sorry if you can hear that background noise but um... anyways this is the actuator that's connected to our controller so we have to uh... in our script we have to name the actuator so cont dot actuators then uh... add two square brackets so again we're pulling it from a list so a name of something Add these two quotation marks because it's the because it's a string, so it's gonna so we're taking the name of something. Because jump is not a variable; it's an actuator. So the name of the actuator is jump. Okay. So now we're going to um, take take two of these for the jump, and we're going to tap right there change this to space key 
spaces in all capitals and so is key do it on both delete these right here and change one to not so if not I'll explain that in a second but right here where it says if so pretty much is saying if um, we're like pressing or holding down the space key then I want you to do this so we're gonna say cont so the controllers and we're gonna say activate okay so we're gonna be activating the actuator so let's go into here well first let's say what we're activating so activate is a function so it needs it needs a variable okay so um the variable right kind of like the cheese we need a certain kind of cheese well we need a certain kind of variable and the certain kind of variable is jump which is right here don't add the quotations you could say if you <laughs> okay so this is a bad way of doing it but if you don't want to make your variable right you could say cont activate cont actuators jump but or we could just say cont activate jump but anyways so we're going to say cont activate jump if this is happening and if this is not so that's what this is right here so if it's not happening so if not holding down this or pressing it go to the colon enter then cont dot d activate activate um jump okay so deactivate is also a function so now let me explain why we had to do this to this and not this okay so right here where we're saying like the w key it's saying that if this is down apply movement it's not saying that if this is down activate something that's applying movement so if we are if we're saying if we're going to say activate something that is applying movement then it's just going to activate it you know so if it happens it activates it right well we we didn't say that if it if we don't press it to deactivate it we just said if it presses activate so it's just going to activate it but this right here this is just saying if it's pressing apply movement so only if it's pressing apply the movement right so this is saying that if this happens then activate this but if it, but so that means if we do that if we don't put this in then as soon as it hits the ground he's gonna jump and jump I mean that'll be good for if you like wanna make a game like doodle jump but we're not making a game like doodle jump so yeah so we want it to deactivate if we're not pressing this because it's an actuator so now let's save this and let me explain the activate in further detail so right here we have contact activate jump okay so let's go into our blender game engine so right here you'll see this is our cont so this is our controller and this is an actuator right and it's connected to our controller so in order for you to activate something or to get a sensor it has to be connected to the uh connected to the um controller right here so we're getting uh dang it we're getting the jump from here and we're pretty much just activating it okay so now let's um let's make sure we save this one more time save then we can x out of there now let's see if it'll reload dang it no oh. okay so let's just unlink it then you don't have to do this if you were doing it in blender then open text block and desktop and uh I don't want you to hear that. Sorry, guys. Blender files and player action. Open text block. Okay. So now we can go into our. Um. Now we can. Uh. Now we can press P to play, and we can. Oh, we'll see that there's an error. Um. So, one second, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So you'll see that if we go into game and or window and toggle system console, that we actually don't. Oh, we forgot to because because we reopened it, we had to connect the script again. So let's connect the script. Press P to play, and now you'll see that we can. Um, is he jumping? Nope. Let's see what our problem is. So let's go into our window 
Winder. Okay, so I saw that we misspelled something. We misspelled activate, so we said active. So let's just change this back to activate. Um, and we need to go back into our script. Okay. And we need to change this to activate because we misspelled it. And then let's save it. Okay. Probably should not exit out of it, but whatever. Now, if we press P, we can move around and jump. You can see him jumping. And we also misspelled activate, deactivate. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, maybe I'm just not going to close down this. Okay, so we have to change that in here. Activate, activate. So let's just minimize that. There, now it will work. So if we press space to jump, we can move around, press space to jump. That's what we want. And you'll see if I get a little closer. Okay, and I press P to play. If I go like that. One second, guys. Jeez, guys, I'm so sorry, but this is the end of this episode. Please like and subscribe. If you if you have a question, this was a long video. It's a really long video. Jeez, this is going to take me forever to upload. Okay, but I really hope you guys got the basics down. <laughs> this was supposed to be easy. I mean, all we did was write this, right? But at least you guys understand, right? You guys understand it. So let's just control S. And let's uh, let's save this as YouTube.blend. And um, if you guys hear the noise in the background, you have no idea how sorry I am. And now let's I'm just gonna save this to my desktop. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.